Hello, my name is Javier Junquera from the University of Cantabria in Spain. Welcome everybody to this lecture where I shall deliver an introduction to the banyoization in siesta. First of all, I would like to cite the most important references on which I have based these notes. The first one is this fantastic book by David Vanderbilt, where the authors provides a comprehensive explanation of very phases in electronic structure theory. And another important reference is this review of maximally localized Vanier functions written by the founders of the Vanierization techniques of band structures obtained from first principles simulations. This is the outline of the talk. I shall split it in five different sections. First of all, I shall define what a Vanier function is. Then, I shall describe their most important properties. Later, some of their potential uses will be highlighted. Emphasis will be made on the fact that the Vanier functions are not unique and to describe one procedure to produce maximally localized Vanier functions. Finally, I shall deliver a brief introduction about how this is done in Siesta, giving some hints about the kind of exercises you will play with in the practical sessions. So let's start with the definition. To simplify the discussion, we can start with a simple case, although all the concepts that will be introduced from now on can be generalized to more complex band manifolds. Imagine that we have a set of isolated bands defined on the whole bridging zone labeled by the discrete band index M. By isolated, we mean that they never touch the bands below or above them. They do not cross at any point of the bridging zone. We can assume that the bands are smooth, continuous, and periodic functions in the first bridging zone of the three-dimensional reciprocal space. Then, it is natural to consider its Fourier transform between reciprocal and real space, defined using some conventions for the, norm the normalization factors by the first equation at the left, where the capital R is a vector of the Bravé lattice in real space. The inverse transform from real space back to reciprocal space is defined by the equation at the right. If the band structure is smooth in reciprocal space, then we can expect that the corresponding Fourier components will be large only a few lattice vectors away from the origin, decaying very rapidly with increasing distance. Up to now, we have focused on the band structure, that means on the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian. But what about if we pay attention to the eigenstates? Then, if we choose a smooth and periodic gauge for the block functions associated with a given band n, and then perform the same Fourier transform as before, we arrive to the Vanier functions associated with that particular band. Again, as it happens for the eigenvalues, if the block functions are smooth in reciprocal space, then the Vanier functions will decay rapidly in real space. It can be proved how this decay depends on the band gap of the material, from exponential in insulators to algebraic in metals. From a mathematical point of view, the Fourier transform is a special case of an unitary transformation. Therefore, we can view the block and Vanier functions as providing two different basis sets describing the same manifold of states associated with the electron band in question. In our simple example, if we have two isolated bands, each of them will generate a given Vanier function where the Fourier transform has to be performed on the block functions describing a given band.
these vanier functions display very interesting properties that can be used afterwards. As it was said before, the vanier functions are localized in real space. We can think of a vanier function associated with a band n as a function picked in a given unit cell, represented by the capital R in the subindex. Even if they are picked in a given unit cell, the tails can extend to neighboring unit cells. Then the value of the vanier function decays as we move away from the unit cell where it is defined. The second property is that at each unit cell in real space, we can define a vanier function, and they are the translational images of one another. The third property is that the vanier functions form an orthonormal set, both in the band index and in the unit cell index. So if they are used as the basis function, then the overlap matrix is the identity. The fourth property is that the Banier functions span the same subspace of the Hilbert space as is spanned by the block functions from which they are constructed. Let us put an example here. If we define the projector operator on a given band as written in the first equation, then we can represent the charge density in real space associated with this band in the basis flock in the basis of block functions as the sum of the square of the module of the block functions or alternatively in the basis of banniers as the sum of the square of the banier functions at that given point in a space both representations are exactly equal All these properties can be visualized on this cartoon in a simple one-dimensional case. The unit cell lattice constant is defined by a lowercase a. We can see in this sketch how the Banier functions are picked on a particular unit cell in real space, how they are normalized and exponentially localized, and how neighboring Banier functions are periodic images of one another. Clearly, they also show a negative low, so that the scalar product between neighboring Banier vanishes due to the cancellation between contributions of opposite sign in the integral over x. Now, the last two properties are related with the expression of the Hamiltonian in a basis of Banier functions. The first one tells us that the Hamiltonian matrix elements expressed in a basis of Baniers are band diagonal. In other words, the Banier functions associated to different bands do not talk each other via the Hamiltonian. So, if the Hamiltonian is band diagonal, what are these terms? That is what this final property is telling us. The diagonal elements of the Hamiltonian are the coefficients in the Fourier expansion of the band energy, as they were shown in the first slide of this presentation. So, from the knowledge of the band structure, the k-point mass, and the unit cell volume, we can get the values of the Hamiltonian matrix elements written in a basis of Banier functions. All these properties make the Banier functions very appealing for different uses. Among all of them, I will emphasize here only two. The first one is the construction of tight binding models. The last property discussed before tell us that the Fourier components of the energy can be considered as the on-site and hopping elements of a tight-binding Hamiltonian. In this sketch here, 
we saw a pannier function at the home unit cell and three periodic replicas. The Fourier components with the lattice vector equal to zero would correspond to the on-site energy of the tight binding approach, while the Fourier components of the other lattice vectors are the corresponding hopings. Then, we can match the tight binding equations with the inverse Fourier transform of these energy terms. By construction, this would reproduce exactly the band dispersion. However, since the Vanier functions are localized in real space, the Hopi matrix elements decay rapidly with the distances between the centers of the Vaniers. Therefore, only a few Hopins can be retained. This approach has the advantage of being systematically improvable. The only thing that we have to do is to increase the range of interaction between the Vaniers. The second use of the Vanier functions came from the relationship between the Vanier centers and the modern theory of polarization. The center of the Vanier functions can be computed from the diagonal matrix elements of the position operator, and then the electronic contribution to the polarization can be completely determined from them. This operation can be considered as a matching of a distributed charge density to a localized set of classical charges located at the center of the Vaniers. One important issue is that the Vanier functions are not univocally defined. As it has been emphasized since the very beginning of the lecture, the Vanier functions are constructed from a unitary transformation of the block functions. Since the, since the phase of these block functions are not univocally defined, many different choices or gauge are possible. A change of the gauge would result in Vanier functions that change the shape, becoming somewhat more or less localized in a space. A way of choosing a sensible gauge was proposed by Marsari and Vanderbilt in this celebrated paper. The guiding rule is the minimization of the spreading, defined in this equation from the diagonal elements of the square of the position operator and the square of the center of the Vaniers. This maximal localization criterion is the one followed in Vanier 90. So finally, how the banalization is done in Siesta. So we have implemented an interface between Siesta and the Vanier 90 code. Right now, Vanier 90 can be run as a post-processing tool, but very soon, its use as a library within Siesta will be available in the master branch. In order to minimize the spreading and produce the maximally localized Vanier functions, Vanier 90 requires some matrices that must be computed in Siesta. Those matrices are the overlap of the periodic part of the wave function at neighbor K points. The second matrix is the overlap of the block states onto a trial set of localized orbitals that will be used as a starting point for the minimization procedure. And the third ingredient to feed Vanier 90 from Siesta are the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian in a grid of k points. You will learn in the exercises how these matrices are generated. Once they are available, we will vanierize, for instance, the top of the balance band and the bottom of the conduction band of an insulator like a strontium titanate. These maximally localized vanier functions would display, respectively, a marked oxygen 2p and titanium T2g character.
As a second exercise, we are going to banerize the band structure of a metal, in this case, graphene. The goal is to plot banner functions coming from the pi and the sigma bondings, as shown in this figure here. Once the Hamiltonian matrix elements are available, we can perform efficient calculations in a very dense grid of k-points in a tight binding-like scheme. This can be used to explore, in detail, Fermi surfaces. That is the final exercise to be run, involving the plotting of the Fermi surface of dope strontium titanate both with holes and electrons.